Acrylicom going 10-8. All right, let's decipher all this mess. All this stuff is surplus gear, and a lot of it is still used today. And I will go in detail in each one of these models here uh, to give you a guide of uh, if this is good for you to choose out there or not. It's not my decision, it's your decision. I could take my advice or you could use your own. Anyway, first up is this old Motorola Centaur X 9000 radio. Uh, I don't think this was the first Motorola radio that was synthesized. I think there was another one or two models before this. They are, believe it or not, still deployed out in the field. But uh, this one is the one that I'm most familiar with. And there are plentiful out there. This Centaur X9000, uh, it's a big beast. It only holds, I think, from 32 to 128 channels into memory. This is the control head that it uses, and you'll see this control head in later models too. Uh, they haven't changed the sort of uh, format of this, but you cannot use this for control head on a newer model radio like a Motorola Spectra. Uh, when they come brand new or refurbished, yeah, once you sort of program this with this radio together, then this becomes the control head for X9000s. And if you uh, do that with uh, Spectra radio, then that control head becomes a Spectra radio head. Uh, it programs each other, if, if you know what I mean. But anyway, this radio here, as far as programming the channels, like let's say you bought this off of eBay, uh, it's, got a, it, it's got some channels in there, and they just sold it to you cold turkey like that. But you can't use those channels. You don't know what they are, uh, and you're more than likely not licensed for it. So you want to put your own channels on this guy here. Uh, you need a laptop there to sort of uh, do that with. There's no keyboard entry or nothing like that with this unit here. Originally, this laptop here is a 8386 processor. Uh, so far, that is the only laptop that I know of that could talk to this machine here. Uh, these other ones here, if you play around with the clock speed, or whatever or use a DOS emulator it may or may not work so this is like vintage 1993 this radio here came out in 1992 around there all these other machines is 2000 year 1995 for this guy here uh, so there's the vintage but I'm gonna work my, my way on backwards I'm gonna try to program this radio with a modern laptop here. Uh, this one here is my work laptop and it was made around 2011. It's got a 2.8 gigahertz CPU speed, 4,960 megabyte uh, memory size or whatever. A big old hard disk. You know the modern stuff that we all have today. With the only difference is you guys probably, your laptop or PC probably does not have a serial port. We spec this machine out to have a serial port so we could program these older legacy radios. Uh, what you guys will have is uh, USB ports and that's these guys right here and you guys will probably need a USB to serial adapter so you could talk to this interface box in turn this interface box will talk to this machine that is the reality of this thing here like I was talking before so uh, just to save time and everything uh, this is what I'm going to use uh, right off the bat it does not work with the uh, serial to, to USB to the serial converter you have to use a true dedicated uh, RS-232 serial port in the back the 9 pin uh, pin up D sub that you see back there to interface to this box here and then possibly you could program this okay things that may go wrong with this unit this control head here this display is incandescent it's not liquid display uh, liquid crystal display LCD display or any other modern sort of uh, display method this is actual light bulbs little mini light bulbs in there and sometimes you'll see segments gone or the whole thing just blanked out. 
Uh, that happens quite a bit with these older units and that's something to look out for. Another thing, this thing is a bear to sort of install because of the size. Uh, if you see this on eBay, I would suggest avoiding it unless you're really comfortable about buying this piece of gear and you know what you're doing and you have the, uh, the support element there to maintain this thing here. Uh, to install this, this it has a mounting plate that is sort of part of the chassis system here and you need a Motorola key here to uh, lock it in there and, and unlock it to uh, what do you call it, uh, take it out if you need to do any work or move it from one vehicle to another. So you, you just unlock it and then like this and you pull the whole unit out and uh, that's how you mount the thing once you get that plate mounted on your uh, vehicle or home base or whatever. So you would need a key. The cable, you need the cable to have it intact. You have your power cable here and your control cable here into this uh, thing here and here's the uh, programming uh, cable right here that's going to go into my radio interface box and then from here this part right here hooks up to my laptop there uh, another thing is uh, if you buy this make sure these two orange and green cable are uh, a little bit longer uh, because you need this to apply power to this. What this will do, I, I forgot which is what for now. Uh, I'm sure you can look it up. Uh, if you apply power to, ju to just one of these leads, it'll enable the radio to be turned on, but you cannot transmit. It disables the transmit. But if you sort of apply power to both, y you are your transmit and the turning on ability of this radio is uh, enabled. Uh, typically what we do is we just tie them together like this apply the ignition sense or 12 volts to this to turn the unit on and then uh, you're off to the races this is replicating my 12 volts as you see the power is off but once you put the power on like right there it's got 12 volts on there the unit turns on uh, that's dependent on whoever is using this if they want that particular option there and it also has an on off switch on the control head itself but it's more convenient to where if you turn your ignition off the whole thing will turn off so if you forget no big deal it's not going to drain your batteries it's up to the user it's, it's his discretion but anyway uh, other than that that's those are the only problems that I see with this and like I said, this thing is 20 years old plus. Uh, another thing that you might run into is the capacitors in this unit might be changing its value because they're so old, you know. When they're out in the environment, uh, let's say this unit here came from the Mojave Desert or Death Valley. You know, there you have temperature extremes from severely hot to somewhat cold, possibly freezing sometimes but every year you get that temperature swing back and forth back and forth the components inside this box here will change its value accordingly especially after 20 so years so it may be working now but you drive down the road 20 miles it's in the middle of the day it's hot this thing starts to heat up as well uh, what would happen is the value of those capacitors in there will change and it will cause the brains of this machine to kind of scramble and, and induce errors and it'll be uh, intermittent in its operation. It will work, it will not work, it will turn off, uh, the display might go a little bit spastic, stuff like that. And those capacitors are these little round sort of uh, uh, components here that one this one uh, in this newer unit and sometimes these older units uh, when we have that problem we have to replace all those capacitors and usually that will bring this back to life and give it another 15 years of service and uh, we call that recapping the whole th all the capacitors of this device is just replaced it's a pain in the ass uh, but that is how you determine whether you need to recap this or not and you can't tell if it's recapped or not I mean it's eBay surplus market you don't know what you're gonna get 
just recently, like right after I did that last video, introductory video of this series, uh, I started snooping around on the internet. And I've looked up this program before. It's a freeware program called DOSBox. Uh, a couple of years ago when I was like looking into it, they didn't have their serial port conversion uh, ready or, or it had a lot of glitches and it wasn't working for my purposes of reprogramming all these radios here. And this program is pretty much geared or, or marketed for uh, old school gamers out there uh, that play DOS program uh, game programming from way back when. We're talking about the uh, Wolfenstein back in the day, you know, that's one of the first uh, first shooter sort of uh, game out there and it ran off of DOS the, the first ones This program here will will Emulate a DOS machine on this modern PC there and slow the CPU and and, and, and Resemble or emulate those older machines to run those older uh, PC games. I thought maybe this would be somewhat of a uh, a solution to my to my problem here. Uh, actually, there's some other people out there that sort of got the same idea too and started snooping around as well. This is not an original idea, but this is one that's been in the back of my brain for quite a while. And I revisited this particular program, and uh, they did quite a bit of uh, improvements, uh, mainly for my use is to fix the serial port in the back here uh, the speed and the handshaking so I will be able to talk to these machines over here so this will be a first for you guys out there and for myself and I gotta say it's working it's already been configured and maybe in another video if there's any interest I would uh, configure one of this program to use for programming here. For now I'm just going to jump right into it and show you that it does work. Uh, you open up DOSBox and this program here is this old program that I used to have, DOS program that, that is kind of like uh, Windows like in a way where it organizes all my DOS programming so I wouldn't have to conjure them up the old-fashioned way you know you get the C prompt and let me escape here and show you what I'm what I'm talking about from here traditionally you would go there and and write in the name of the program that you wanna uh, run and let's and, and it will run it that way but then you would have to go to the directory and put in the syntax for the directory and this that the other it's a pain in the ass so I just use this other program menu to to organize it the way I want it and here is all my old DOS radio programming software so it's Motorola it's a mobile so I go into that menu and here are the old radios that that I have uh, to program so it's a Centaur X conventional Go into that menu. This radio here has two programs. One to program the radio and the other one to program the control head. So the control head programming would would, would configure all the buttons and the naming of the of the of the channels. Like channel one would be gold or or something like that. Uh, whatever alpha tags you want to put on it. Then the radio program, Centaur X radio programming, would program the radio itself with the frequencies and the codes and uh, power levels and all that other good stuff. So there's two configuring programs you need to to configure this radio here. We're talking about 1992 uh, and DOS programming and older computers. That's what they that was the the shit back in the day, not today. So this is what we're having to redo today so right off the bat let me tell you I had this working it did work I'm gonna go here into the radio and open that up and that's the Motorola radio programming for the Centaur X9000 uh, press any key to continue and I'm just gonna read uh, if you get if you get this set up here it is highly recommended that you read the radios and save that file for your return back to zero file you know if you mess up somewhere something goes wrong you could always return to that one file that you confirmed 
and saved into memory here in, in your uh, programming very important especially with the surplus stuff but anyway uh, what's nice about this program too is you can mess around with the speed so up here you see uh, CPU speed and right now is defaulted to 3000 I know with this particular machine it's somewhat reliable at 7000 so with this program you have to if you notice the speed the CPU speed is at 3000 cycles if you do control F12 it will speed that up and I know on this machine here it's reliably uh, configured to work at 7250 so I have to scroll up all the way to 7250 around there let's go 7280 and that's something that you're gonna have to sit down and sort of play with you, you are stepping yourself into it to make it work reliably and you'll see why uh, now I got this ready to go so I'll turn on the interface box this menu system is really archaic compared to today so that's just the name of the game press R to read the radio EEPROM in there then it's going to say turn radio on before connecting and all that other stuff press any key to continue right there it says uh, serial bus failure power fault that's the kind of problems that you'll get like here it's talking to it but a little bit too fast or too slow one of the two I'm gonna go ahead and try to read it again Oh. It went into uh, programming mode and then it kicked itself out. Uh, the, the speed is a bit too fast or too slow, one of those two. So I'm going to have to play around with that cycles. The uh, speed of the CPU, either slow it down or speed it up to sort of make it work. So I'm going to go ahead and slow it down a bit. See, it's not working anymore. It's real intermittent. So that's what I'm talking about, the sort of pain of programming this thing with modern PCs uh, the handshaking and and the talking between the old and the new is really not there I gotta say that I was able to program both the control head and this unit uh, reliably the other day but for some reason I'm just having a heck of a time doing it today I was able to change frequencies and this that the other reliably but uh, like I said for some reason today it's, it's it's not good so not recommended for uh, surplus purchase Centaur X9000 just for the fact that your support element would have to be just as old okay let's move on